Please stand and join me as we together pray the Moravian Memorial Service Liturgy. Lord our God, in whom we live and move and have our being. Lord, our God, you do not willingly bring affliction or grief to your children. Lord, our God, you have raised Christ from death as the assurance that those who sleep in death will also be raised. Eternal God, accept us as your children in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who came into the world from you was born a human being and lived among us. He took the role of a servant and has redeemed us from all sin and from death with his holy and precious blood and with his innocent suffering and dying. Christ has done this so that we may be his own, live in his kingdom and serve him in eternal righteousness, innocence and happiness. Since he being raised from the dead, lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our Savior has said, whoever hears my words and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has already passed from death into life. As a father has compassion on his children, so God has compassion on those who honor him for he knows how we were formed. He remembers that we are dust. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down and sustains those who are bereaved, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Philadelphia Moravian Church on this Sunday, September 12th. A um, couple of announcements for you. The uh, first is that I hope you'll notice the golden flowers behind me this morning. They are in honor and recognition of the golden anniversary of Marla and Bill Sparks. 
I know you wonder, where has the 50 years gone? But there are wonderful children and grandchildren that can attest that they have indeed been wonderful years, and congratulations on this important milestone. Um, thank you to Circle 8 and everyone who participated in the um, fantastic event this past week. The Antiques Roadshow was a great success and a lot of fun. There was a lot of laughter and a lot of camaraderie. It was a wonderful connecting event. If you have been asked to write a devotion for the Advent Devotion Guide, which is coming up, well, then you will be. Um, there are 26 devotions available, and this year, as you remember, we are um, discussing the names of Jesus. If you are a little bit hesitant because you've never written a devotion before and aren't real sure how to get started, don't worry, because on October 14th, in the Friendship Room during the Sunday School Hour, Kay Windsor is going to give us a 101 on how to approach scripture and how to write a devotion. This is gonna be a great time to learn a little something and it might make you feel a little more confident. So I hope you'll take advantage of that opportunity. Lots of other announcements are listed on the back of your um, bulletin. Many things coming up in October, so I hope you'll be around to be part of all of those. Thank you very much. Last Sunday, as we focused on the heart, I said that the entire service was the sermon. Well, today we might say that the entire service is the prayer. Throughout the remainder of the service, we will be lifting up prayers for ourselves, our congregation, our church, our community, our nation, and our world. And we will sing many of those prayers. The first hymn that we sang today began with the words, O oh God. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. And the next hymn we sing begins with the words, Lord, we your people gathered here ask you to help us now to hear. And the choir will sing a fervent prayer for peace. Oh Christ, have mercy. Then we'll sing, Oh God, our hearts were shattered on that horrendous day. God, give us faith and wisdom to be your healing hands. God, we've known such grief and anger as we've heard your people cry. And at the conclusion of the service, we'll sing, O God of mercy, hear us. In steadfast love, draw near us. So we begin this extended time of prayer by singing, Lord, we your people gathered here ask you to help us now to hear. In the midst of our prayers, we remember that our gifts can be used to be part of God's mission to bring hope and healing in the world. There are offering plates in the vestibule, or you can mail your checks to New Philadelphia, or use one of the secure giving portals on our website. 
Please take a moment this morning to sign the friendship register, the little red book that is in each pew, and then pass it down so everyone can do that. It's really important for us to do this so that we don't have to sign in when we arrive in the morning. I think this is a much friendlier way, but it's important for all of us to, to do it, and thanks for that. The choir will sing our prayer. The Kyrie was written by Rene Clausen as part of a work entitled Memorial that honors the memory of the many lives lost on September 11, 2001, 20 years ago. It's a moving plea for peace. And the words are simply, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, grant us peace. But he also uses the Hebrew word, Hadonai, which means my Lord, a personal and communal plea for peace. Let us pray.
and sing together. to reflect and remember, to reflect on what is unknown and what is known. What is so often unknown and uncertain is the what and the when and the how and the where and the why. What makes people do these awful things? When might something like this happen again? How can terrorism and tragedies be averted and prevented? Where might the next tragedy take place? Why do these things happen? Why, O oh Lord? Those are the unknowns. The what and the when and the how and where and why. But what we do know is the who. The one whom we can turn to. The one who is a very present help in times of trouble. And so we turn to God and ask God to grant peace in our hearts. Peace to this congregation, peace in our church and our community and our nation and our world. Oh God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom right here.
sometimes it's good to simply be still and know that God is God. Sometimes we don't know that God is all that we need until God is all that we have. Count Zinzendorf in our history recognized this 300 years ago. He saw what happens when we try to fix things in our own way, when we respond to the enemy with the enemy's weapons and not with the full armor of God. He said, even with the best intentions, we confuse God's will with ours. The hymn that began our prayer today was written less than a month ago by Brother Daniel Cruz. But this next hymn was written by Zinzendorf in the 18th century. But both of these hymns point us to the one in whom we find our hope and healing. Good morning. It's time for the children's message. So this morning, why do we want to make a point of remembering 9-11? It happened before most of our children were born. It was a sad day and a very upsetting day. So why do we want to make a special remembrance of a sad event? It's true. There were bad people who set out to do evil on that day in American history, and they succeeded. And we remember the people that they hurt, the families that they changed forever, and all of that is true and sad. But there's another reason we remember this event that happened before you were born. We learned about a few bad people whose actions were evil, but on that day and after, we saw that there were far, far, far more good people who acted like Jesus told us to and loved their neighbor as themselves. Those people acted as Jesus' hands and feet right here on earth. There were firefighters and policemen. There were people who dropped everything and ran to help. There were lines at the Red Cross across the nation with people lined up all night long to give blood to those who might need it. There were children across the nation selling lemonade, raking leaves to make money to donate to families impacted by 9-11. There were doctors, nurses, paramedics working around the clock to help the people who were hurt. There were whole towns that rallied to take care of travelers who suddenly found themselves unable to get home when all the airplanes had to be grounded for a few days until we knew it was safe again. 
And there was a whole nation of people who prayed together for each other's safety. So yes, we do remember 9-11 because something bad happened. And it's true that bad things can and do happen. But we also remember, because just like on 9-11, while there, are more, there may be hurtful people in the world, there are multiple, multiple, multiple times more good people who work to protect and care and to be Jesus' hand and feet all the time. We are lucky, incredibly blessed to live in a nation where we are allowed to worship as we believe is right, where everyone, everyone can go to school, where our first responders and our military work to protect us every minute of every day. So while we do remember 9-11 because of the actions of some hurtful people, we also remember 9-11 because of the actions of thousands, millions of Americans who rose up to protect, to care, and to lift each other up. So you, can usually, you know I usually have something here to, to tell the story with, but today you are gonna be the story. So adults, please stand if you hear something that applies to you. So kids, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're watching from home, I want you to take a moment and know that while, yes, there is evil in our world, there is a lot more good. You are surrounded by people who will protect you and care for you all the time. So, please stand if you are or ever were a firefighter, a policeman, a member of our military, current or former, a pastor, a teacher, a healthcare worker, a parent, all those who love and pray for children. Now, kids, whether you're here or at home, take a look around at all the hands and feet of Jesus surrounding you. Go ahead and be seated. We remember 9-11 because we learned some good things from our nation on a very sad and scary day. Americans stepped up immediately to protect and help each other and care for each other. So instead of worry and anxiety and fear, be still. Be still. Remember what you saw when you looked around you. It's okay to look back and remember a sad day. And then take time to be still and know that you are protected and loved by us and by God and surrounded by good people. Lots of them. Amen. And it is time for Children's Church. As we have been doing over the past few weeks, as the children depart for Children's Church, we sing Jesus Loves Me in some of the languages spoken by some of the children whom Jesus loves. Last week we sang in Spanish, and I warned you that we had a Spanish-speaking family here. Today we sing in Miskito, and what are the chances but Dr. Benno and Sister Teresa Marks, who served at the Awas Clinic in Honduras for many years and speak Miskito, along with a few people in the choir, also speak it. So this is how it goes. Jesus yangra latwansa, Bible ban ais malkisa, tukta nani witin ba, witin dukia hulkisa. Jesus wandawan latwan ai kaikisa. So, Let's stand, and before we sing, just take a moment and, and, and look around and wave at all of God's children. Great to see you, Larry, and your wife, who I got to meet this morning, and, and wave at other people who are here. And let's sing in English and Mesquito.
I'll be reading a portion of the assigned gospel reading for today from the eighth chapter of Mark's gospel. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Last Sunday afternoon, after what for me was a very meaningful and fulfilling time in worship together, I was relaxing at home with some dear family members, and we decided to watch a movie on Netflix. The name of the movie was Worth, and it was not the biography of your former pastor. <laughs> no, it's the story of the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund that was set up by Congress in the months following that tragic event. And the basic question that the government's lawyers had to deal with was, can you put a price tag on a person's life? And if so, is a janitor's or school teacher's life worth less than a Fortune 500 CEO's life because the CEO earns more money and owns multiple houses and cars and has stocks and so forth? That's the sort of questions that the people in charge of the fund had to answer before the two-year deadline and that the movie tried to answer in two hours. I'm not sure it was really able to do that, at least not to my satisfaction, that the fund ended up paying out almost $8 billion to 5,560 victims' families. The amount paid was usually based on calculating how much the victim would have earned in a lifetime, but other factors were also taken into consideration. What is a person's life worth? The movie may not have given me a satisfying answer, but I went to bed last Sunday evening reflecting on that question. And on Monday morning, as is my custom, I got up and looked at the assigned gospel reading for today in Mark chapter 8, and I read these words of Jesus. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? What is a person's life worth? What can they give in return for their life? What is it that gives a person's life its value? Maybe it's not the, the, the what or the, or the how much. Maybe, again, it's the who, for whom that life was lived. Now, over the past few days, there have been lots of special presentations, very touching moments where relatives of the victims have, have shared stories that reflect how much that person meant to them, their value. And they all talked about the value and worth of their loved one's life, but none of them mentioned any numbers or dollar figures. Maybe the real value of our life has to do with the impact that we have on others. You may remember that se September 11th, 2001 was a Tuesday. I was serving as pastor of New Hope Moravian Church in Miami, and we had a weekly prayer meeting on Wednesday evenings. And we decided not to cancel it on Wednesday, September 12th, 2001. We had the highest attendance that we had ever had. You know, even in a small congregation, we had about 100 members, there can be lots of differences. We had people from Nicaragua and Jamaica and Antigua and Cuba and probably a dozen other countries. Men and women, young and not so young, people who liked traditional Moravian hymns and others who liked Caribbean praise choruses. But none of that mattered that evening because we were all looking to the one who was our help in ages past and is our hope for years to come. We hear stories of 40 strangers on an airplane joining together in a mutual mission, recognizing that the true value of their lives might be in the impact that they can have on other lives, that by forfeiting their lives, they might save many. 
And there are stories of people in the buildings on the ground helping each other and first responders sacrificing their lives for people they didn't know, not stopping to ask them questions about their heritage or their political leaning or their faith traditions, not trying to decide how much this particular life was worth. It was a life. And then I remembered a funeral service that I attended four years ago. Caroline Lineback Wu. Many of you knew her. She would have been 50 years old this past week, believe it or not. The funeral was at home church, and my dear brother Kevin Frack spoke at the service. Caroline's life had touched many lives, and, and, and the place was packed with people from many congregations, not just Moravians. And Kevin began by saying, take a look around you. Did you ever imagine you would be sitting in the same room with some of the folks you see? People you don't often associate with. We looked around and it was pretty powerful. And then he said, and to think it took a death to bring us together. And there was a silence and some uneasiness as we let that soak in. But then he broke the silence by saying, and I'm not just referring to Caroline's death. No, I'm referring to the one who gave his life that we might have life, meaningful, abundant life, life that is more, worth more than we could ever imagine, a life that is connected to God and connected to others. But sometimes it takes a tragedy. Sometimes it takes a death to make that happen. So this morning we remember those who gave their lives for others 20 years ago. And we remember the one who gave his life 2,000 years ago for us and for all the world so that our fellowship, our unity with each other might be like his unity with God the Father. And we celebrate that gift of life today with a love feast. Now you're gonna be served a bun and we will pray a blessing together but we're not going to partake of that bread here. We will take it with us and find a time to eat and pray and reflect on the life that is made possible for us because of the value that Jesus placed on our lives.
Even though we won't be partaking here, we're going to say a Moravian blessing together. And notice I said a Moravian blessing because there are several versions. And then as the choir sings the anthem, I ask that you look at the insert in your bulletin and think about how and when you can break bread and reflect on the brokenness in the world, but also reflect on how God can use us to bring hope and healing. Now, I chose this particular version of the Moravian blessing because, you know, the old meaning of that word dear is expensive. In fact, growing up in Nicaragua, we used to say that something was too dear to be able to afford because it cost a lot. And so we're actually asking God to bless the ones that God holds dear or the ones whose lives have great value for him, everyone and everywhere. So we pray, bless your, thy dear ones, expensive ones, the ones whose life has extreme value everywhere. Let's pray together. Come, Lord Jesus, our guest to be, and bless these gifts bestowed by thee. Bless thy dear ones everywhere, and keep them in thy loving care. Amen.
please stand as we join together in the conclusion of the memorial service liturgy. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. And those who live and believe in me will never die. Therefore, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor. Where death is your victory? Where grave is your sting? It is sin which gives death its power, and it is the law which gives sin its strength. All thanks to God who delivered us from the fear of death, the power of sin, and the condemnation of the law. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep us in everlasting fellowship with the heavenly church triumphant and let us rest together in your presence from our labors. Hear us, gracious Lord. Glory be to him who is the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, he gives us life now and forever. Glory be to Christ in the church which, which waits for him on earth and in the church which is around him in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I share the last words of benediction and asking for God's peace. I'd like us just to take a moment of silence. And during that moment of silence, think of one particular life that you are thankful for. And as we are standing in silence, as you think of that person, just lift a hand thinking of them and asking God's blessing on them that their life might be truly have the worth that God has desired for it. And then I will pray this final prayer together. Let's take a moment of silence. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>